In this small tutorial series, we will learn the basics and essentials of Vue 3. So let us start understanding the ins and outs of Vue 3. So for this series, I am assuming that you are familiar with the basics of Vue and how to create components in Vue. Now if you are familiar with Vue, you must have faced some limitations as your components grow. They become uglier, less readable and hence less maintainable. So consider this example, the user repositories component. Here you can see we are importing components like repositories, filters, repositories sort by and repositories list. Then this component expects a prop which is the user prop. Then we have the data method from which we are returning an object and our reactive properties like repositories, filters, a search query which is basically to search for some user repositories, so a search term. Then we have some computed properties, then a watcher, then methods, right? Now what is the problem with this code? Here you can see it says organizing logics with component options, data, computed methods and watch. It works in most cases. However, when our components get bigger, the list of logical concerns also grows, right? With the growth in logical concerns, the code becomes less readable and hence less maintainable. Now here you can see it shows an example where a large component with its logical concerns are grouped by colors, right? Then there is one more disadvantage of declaring or defining your components using the regular component syntax and that is you reuse pieces of code across components. Each of these code reuse patterns in Vue 2 has its drawbacks. So let us understand how Vue 3 solves this problem. Now with Vue 3, we can make use of something called as the Composition API to make our code more readable. So this all starts with the setup method inside our component. Now it is inside this method we can start using the new syntax that the Composition API exposes. Now as a side note, this syntax is completely optional. We can still use the old syntax, the regular component syntax for coding our components as we had before. Now the concept that we use here is to write composition functions which I will talk about in a separate video. Now these are the functions that we define outside the setup method. So the composition functions are also called as composables uh, which you can define using this syntax. So you export a function and you use this naming convention. So use and then the name of your composition function. Now these are the functions that we can define outside the setup method. So write outside this. Or we can also outsource it into a separate component file. Now it hardly matters where you define these composition functions. The only thing that is important to understand here is that they need to be called inside the setup method. So if you have this composition function, you need to call it inside the setup method by first importing it into the component in which you want to use them. So if they are outsourced as separate component files, you need to import it into the component in which you want to use it and then you can use it within the setup method, right? Now this way you can organize your code by its logical concerns. So with Vue 3, we can write composition functions that helps us to reuse our code in a more organized manner. So using the composition functions, you can see that this uses less code and is much more flexible than what we used to do with Vue 2. So this was a quick introduction about the composition API. In the next video, we will scaffold a Vue 3 project and we will start exploring more features that Vue 3 exposes. If you like the video, do give it a thumbs up or comment down below if you have any query or suggestion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the very next one.